Greetings! Today, me and my friend Brian will be watching the contemporary classic The Brave Little Toaster. The Brave Little Toaster is recorded by his best friend, the shaky 8mm camera. You know, this is pretty <laughs> shaky. <laughs> I told you, the film print is just wrecked. It's, uh... Wow! <laughs> it's a still <laughs> shot, though! I hope that radio doesn't come to life. That'd piss me off. <laughs> good morning, kid. Good morning, Did you kid. Sleep well? Did you sleep good, you little, <laughs> you little dick and Jew? Yeah. I watched you sleeping all night long. I did. So here's where my question comes in. Are they? They're all friends in the way that this is a Disney movie, but they seem to be like actively beating the crap out of each other. Like they would be covered in dents constantly. Yeah, they should be. Con they should be horribly damaged and scratched. But also, why are they resigned to live with each other? Why? Why the kid? Why not the parents? Why aren't any of the appliances voiced by black people? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> Is it Is something Phil to do with the writing, maybe? I heard there was like an on, not an onset fight, but there was a fight that uh, the toaster was going to be played by a lady. Oh no, not a lady toaster. Gross. Well, we should be fair. This is not a lady toaster. This is a this is a non-gendered toaster cuz the guy who wrote the original book writes like a robot. And so every piece of dialogue is very utilitarian like, "Are you a man or a woman?" "I'm I'm a I'm a toaster." I mean, that's fair. Why why even ask the question? Like <laughs> everything's absurd enough. That's true. I'm not asking like, "Where does the radio take a shit?" Uh, but I would like to know. I'd be curious. Why are they plugged in? Yeah, but why? the toaster's not. Why do they? <laughs> why did he just plug himself the in there for no re on? reason? What was the point of that? To illustrate that they need to be plugged in. Who's making these appliances? Yeah, the, do do they come to life in the factory? And go, but I love you. That blanket kind of freaks I, I, me I out. I showed Brian. you the the blanket's pretty freaky. Did I show you the original drawing where it's like the face takes up the whole blanket? It's like, hello, give me a hug. <laughs> no, I don't want to see that. That's spooky. <laughs> This is a normal day in the life of these characters, and they're constantly just fighting. I guess this is year five, though, so, you know, they probably have gone insane in their own special way by this point. You did the math. It was five th or 2,000 days is five years. They haven't been there in five years. Do you think his dad's in the basement somewhere just dangling, and they're like, we gotta keep the place clean for the master? Oh, he would be so lucky, because these things are plugging themselves in, too, so it's not just keeping the electricity on. These things are actively... Actively draining the shit out of the... <laughs> <laughs> if they're cleaning the house, why is the house all fucked up? Do they just not do maintenance? Uh, you have to put in a work order? That's a good question. They don't clean up... I guess they don't clean up the front of the house because it would be revealing that they're alive? Why isn't my house clean is the question. Is, that explains why I, my air fryer has so many fucking dings in it. Oh, your, your appliances fucking me. hate you. That's why. <laughs> I just don't treat them good enough. Yeah, they don't love you. The blanket Zoloft just kicked in. <laughs> the, the, the field kicking in there. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I feel it, Toaster. Toaster. I see it. God. <laughs> now, this seems incredibly dangerous, and maybe they have, I don't know, a fucking ladder somewhere in the house. Hurry, stack the master's belongings as high as you can. <laughs> Hey, look, it's the only road. Yeah, why does this house have a paved road through the mountains leading all the way to it? Oh, God. Yeah, what does dead animal pickup cost in this community? Did you see that it had teeth? What, the blanket? The blanket had teeth. I don't like when my blankets have teeth. No, that's a bad feature. <laughs> oh, no, don't. <laughs> if you take in too much Zoloft, you may see a floating blanket. Get it away! Get it away! Please consult your doctor <laughs> if you see this monster floating if towards you. you. floating... There, there may be another house in this remote I village. can't quite tell what the perspective of that was, but it looked like that car drove all the way up there, then just did a U-turn and turn and just left. Meow. It's the appliances from across the lane You want to see me do some donuts them. in the toaster's lawn? Yeah. That, this house is haunted by appliances. This house is haunted by appliances. Let's do a drive-by. No time to put back all these belongings, which aren't alive. I bet, I bet when they put it away, it's like, hey, I'm the, I'm the trunk, I'm alive, I love you. <laughs> like, Trunks don't talk. Shut up, you. Why is the blanket, like, on all fours? I don't like that. Because he, he's like a shapeshifter. The vacuum seems to, uh, be very verbally abusive. Yeah, well, they have it coming. Somebody has to set these fuckers in line. They should not feel bad if any of them die now, because they killed that picture frame. 
<laughs> it's someone's job to like go take that still photo of the kid and just manipulate it. Oh yeah, they didn't have three D back then, so they had to just redraw it at one hundred and eighty degrees. Can you do this two D thing, three D for me by hand? I, I, I got a job at Disney. Time to draw a picture at a million different angles. Hey, look, it's Phil Hartman. Just like I, I heard a story. Him. That's exactly what he looked like. My friend had a story about he did a Jack Nicholson bit in some other movie, and Jack saw him at a golf course, and he was like, "Hey, Jack, I did you in a movie," and he goes, "Uh." I heard that was the worst piece of shit I was never in. <laughs> the toaster, really, if you think about it, the toaster is like the general custer of this movie. He's just leading them into death. Okay, so death exists in this universe. That's good. Yeah, the appliances He's not can for back. sure die. <laughs> yeah. He was a jerk anyway. I'm glad, he, I'm glad he fucking had a stroke and died after he verbally abused him to the point of having a mental breakdown. He was a jerk. The vacuum was actually pretty cool, all in all, up until he died. Like, the toaster was really the one going, Hey, stupid! Hey! I'm brave. Kill yourself! Kill yourself! Do Kill it! Me. The toaster's on a soapbox. Oh, he's literally pontificating. On his soapbox. So this is where we get back into my talk about how the toaster is General Custer. Alright, if we all leave the house now, we can go find the master. Radio, why do you keep picking up so much shit from World War II? I love World War II! World War II was the best oh. war! <laughs> what about Hillary's emails? Listen up, gang! It's all a hoax! All computer animation, you see! <laughs> I've never been to that high school, it can't be real! Impossible! I like when the toaster says, don't be a wet blanket. If you were a wet blanket, you'd be a dead blanket. Yeah, yeah, why? <laughs> you don't want to pee on an electric blanket. <laughs> Wasn't that a game in Ren and Stimpy? The concept is the same. <laughs> don't piss on the yellow blanket. He was white when they got him. The radio's just talking about, I was a mountaineer. You fucking liar. <laughs> the blanket should actually be grateful. He he got out before the master got into his teenage years. He would have been the crusty little blanket. Oh, yeah, that would have been awful. He's like, Master, I love... What, what are you doing, Master? No! No, <laughs> Master, no! <laughs> yeah, so this movie, it was originally made by John Hug Me Harder Lasseter, who, who was like, I really want to make some inanimate shit come to life and go on a journey to find the kid. And he never... I don't think he ever got to his dream, did he? Oh, well, I haven't heard of that. Is there another movie with inanimate objects that come to life? Uh, Indian in the Cupboard. So they knocked over the refrigerator... Mm. It has cold food in it, and it's not alive, but it, it runs on electricity like they do, and I hate that. Makes me angry. Back to where, just back like a little bit further. But, yeah, yeah, that frame right there, go back. When they're when they're skating away from their fridge. Okay, yeah, yeah, pause. Look, look, there's the corpse of the <laughs> air conditioner and the corpse of the refrigerator. <laughs> it's just like, they, they already got two confirmed kills. <laughs> First 20 minutes of the movie, <laughs> two confirmed kills. First 20 minutes, there's two dead appliances. They're fucking dead, Brian. They're dead. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's grim. That's grim looking. Like when you when you realize that they're alive. <laughs> okay, so the characters need power. Yeah. <laughs> they go and take... They're appliances. They need electricity to work. But look at Lamp right now. He ain't plugged into nothing. <laughs> All right, all right. I was going to tell you the story. You remember the the boss I had, and he hooked. He wanted to. Uh, he wanted to get the car going, and so he needed a jump start, and and he just took he took the jumper cables and then hooked my battery together, and then just clamps the two things together and watches the sparks go. And he's like, ah, it's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I don't care if your car works after this. I need the jump. Look at that. Look at the funny sparks. <laughs> This is like you were saying the first time we went through this, but, uh, you see the road, they immediately veer off it. Yeah, uh, yeah let's not use the road. Let's go through this, this, uh, tick infested grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The road, what's that? This gravel shit's in our way. We gotta go on this nice grass. The quickest way to the city is through the grass. <laughs> you know, Wendy, a lot of settlers died up here. Even even the toaster mentions it. I don't see the road anymore. <laughs> yeah, maybe we should have gone on that thing. <laughs> I think that they should have focused on that. The toaster should have been like, I told you the road was important. <laughs> you know, they, the whole movie's just toaster going, why didn't you take the road? And they just cut it all out. It had to be 90 minutes. 
I hate my friends. They're all wrong. They're dumb. We would have been to the master minutes ago. <laughs> the toaster's just, just telling them how shitty and worthless they are. This is the way the toaster talks to everybody. He's so condescending. But also, ha that's toxic positivity right there. You guys can do it. Go go do it now. Yeah. Uh, you can climb the mountain. Just get on up there. You can do it. <laughs> I'm a toaster. He's I'm not, not on wheels. It. He's he's fucking dead. You know, if you've ever been in the boonies and you see the, uh, you just see the absolute amount of random garbage strewn in the forest, those aren't those aren't things people lost when they got addicted to what you call it. Those are actually just characters. We're gonna go find the master, and they just failed their mission. We're gonna find the master, and then they get caught up in rocks and just die. <laughs> They're going to have like a Samsung vacuum and it's going to fucking explode two seconds into going into the grass. <laughs> it's got like an RMA error and you have to take it back. <laughs> they were trying to they were trying to talk to the Samsung washing machine and the door just got stuck open and it went, ah, ah, kill me. I like to think Samsung's aware of their appliances being alive, so they chain them during the <laughs> production process. Like, make sure to hold it still. <laughs> Yeah, if they did this now, it would be the it would be the Toshiba refrigerator telling them they can't do it. But we got Wi-Fi right here. Oh, it would, they would ruin it. This this movie isn't awful. I'm just riffing on it. But I mean, they would say, "Oh, it's all artificial intelligence, and they're programmed by an algorithm." Oh, like, and the algorithm came to life, like Skynet. Like Chucky, yeah, yeah. This is actually a prequel to to the new Child's Play. Eh, AI ruins things. At least at least there's a little bit of wonderment here you know oh dude yeah i uh even that chucky movie the the wonderment was pretty good i i well not the wonderment but the fear in it i actually i did like that he was like i'm your friend i'm gonna you want a head in a bag here you go oh yeah it's a different story though you know, they you got know. it right see in the original version well, somebody would be responsible for this so that's something yeah in the original version of this they all just went in the woods with video cameras toaster toaster where are you and the toaster's standing in the corner <laughs> and then 20 years later we get to go that was my toaster we're gonna go in the woods and find him what's <laughs> i like the i like the uh vacuum cleaner because he's full of shit right now <laughs> he, just like you're i am full of shit vacuum cleaner i know please kill me <laughs> why did we go off the road why did we go off the road you should have stayed home i do like that they gang up on the radio at this point they're just like you've led us to nothing we're all gonna die I like that the radio looks like the doctor's bag from the Dr. Dick music oh my video. God, it does. That'll always make me happy. Oh, oh, and then just for the fuck of it, <laughs> the 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 lamp is holding a rock like the size of his head. Like he's ready to end him. Yeah, it's a pretty big rock. He could kill somebody. He could kill a living person easily. You know, people go missing in the woods all the time. I mean, who am I to say what happened? You think appliances were alive during World War II? That would have made things more complicated. Oh boy, I'm gonna go fly. We're being shelled. <laughs> We're being shelled. Blanky hide. He's like, there's nowhere to hide, there's, toaster. What do you, what generation is that blanket from? He's been five. He's been cursed being five for a millennia. I don't like it. I've had friends that move like the blanket does. I like how toaster's like, you know, like go somewhere else. I like that the toaster's like, your job is to be hugged, but can you go away? Yeah, that gets back to the book. Like in the second one, the second book. The, uh, they, they just completely ignore, like, half the characters because the writer was like, all right, uh, well, how could a vacuum cleaner go to outer space? That's preposterous. Yeah, that's way more preposterous than it just going through what we're seeing now, a huge set of brambles. I don't even know what that stuff is. That must be real, but I've never, I've never walked outside and yeah. seen exactly this. Well, that's, that's like the Disney haunted like house little... ride. Like, like. Yeah. Well, no, I just love, it just reminds me, like of Orson Welles, like, absolutely not could, could, uh, could a, a vacuum cleaner go to space? A child could tell you that. A child could tell you that the vacuum cleaner could never, never go to space. I met a toaster once. He was dreadful. Didn't speak a word of English. Yes, Blanket, the mealy-mouthed sycophant of the group, constantly praising this so-called master. Master of what? Whenever you do an Orson Welles, he always turns a he always turns British. It's the best I can do. Uh, no, no, I, I do it too. It's just, how is he not? It's like Kubrick. Like, Kubrick's like a New York dude. Nobody talks like that. <laughs> okay, so now we get to the point in the movie they're, they're, uh, they're, they've just entered Disney realm. They're in a pond. You see the frog try to eat the toaster. Someone was writing this, and they were like, and then they go to the city, and the animator's like, no, we need ten minutes of little cute mice dragging the blanket to its death. I think my favorite concept in this movie, especially at this point, is the idea that animals and appliances have an unspoken alliance. 
to gaslight people into thinking that they can't talk or think for no real good reason. <laughs> I can't decipher why. I do like the idea that you, it's, in Toy Story with the kid, it's like, we see everything. And then in Toaster, whatever, the Mars one, the baby, they're just like, hi, baby, we're alive. Don't worry about it. He'll forget after we put the blanket over him for a few minutes. <laughs> That's the blanket's job. Memory wipe him, says the toaster, then they just, like, hold the blanket over the baby's face for five minutes. <laughs> they think minutes. they're neuralizing him. So that's why I'm bad at math. The they're lady who played the toaster, that lady's son, uh, I guess he fought in Iraq, and, like, all all his friends brought toasters when he was deployed, and they had the mom, like, the the toaster's VO. They were like, can you, can you side our toasters? And she wrote something like, go toast them overseas. <laughs> Yeah, toast them all. Oh, that's born to toast. <laughs> yeah, that's great. The flower starts trying to hug the toaster. I love you. I love you. In the book, it's a sonnet, and the flower immediately dies of loneliness after the toaster abandons him. Damn, toaster! You could have spent like five seconds around the flower. What was it gonna do? Pollinate on you? Well, it is kind of nasty. I don't. I wouldn't want a flower to pollinate on me. But still, that's true. Yeah, you should feel bad, toaster. You should feel awful about this. This is your fault. That's another kill. It's three kills. Well, in fairness, the toaster feels bad because the flower is like, I've never met anyone before and I love you. And the toaster's like, what's the flower going to do? Stalk him? <laughs> the uh, yeah, they're going to kill him. Oh, the Get mice it. are getting the blanket. Did you know that mice, like, mice are insane because they can build little, like, shelves out of, like, playing cards? If you're ever missing a sock, it's really, really likely that it's like a mouse in your wall. That's awesome. Yeah, just a little bit of trivia. Hey, why do they... <laughs> Why are they waving goodbye to the animals? Animals made them miserable. <laughs> that felt like a, like a Spyro game where there's like 40 people like, we exist just here for you to wave at us. Yeah, those animals, in, in the framing of this movie, those animals exist just to be clowns for a few minutes to the appliances. You know, sometimes that's how I feel we are. We're just clowns for people. Yeah, well, this is the internet. Okay, so here's here's where, where they all immediately go into the woods and they're like, is this the big city? Yeah, that's the big city. You see that giant redwood there? That's uh, Times Square. Man, this is the scene where they, they go behind the redwoods and find a speeder bike. And they find a little cabin with a funny little book in it. No, they started in the cabin with a little book. Actually, this was Ash's house. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> the Necronomicon. <laughs> Toaster, are we going to bring the Necronomicon? Oh, that's what they mean by master. The ma Their owner, the, the person who bought them, must have brought the Necronomicon to the big city. They need to go retrieve it so they can bring the deadites back so they can stop the animals or whatever. Oh, it's a fetch quest. I, Yeah, I get it. It makes more sense. They really should have established that. Oh, man. They didn't even bother to establish that the toaster needs to be nicer to the blanket. They just have a scene where he's like, I'm nicer now. I just realized that there's two scenes of them going, all right, we need to make camp. And they're, look at that. that. That face is spooky. That would scare away things. They can hide in the spooky tree. It has a roof. It's made of wood like their cabin house. But they're not going to go in there because it's scary looking. What if they just walked away and the tree was like, why don't people ever talk to me? And then it dies. Yeah, yeah it dies of loneliness, just like the flower and the air conditioner and probably the master for all they know. Is that what actually powers them as attention? Is it like the internet to where like if you don't pay attention to something, it dies? It is kind of like Twitter where like they seem to be powered on conflict and hatred. Yeah, like, the more arguments they have, the better off they are. They seem to be fine. They're not plugged into anything right now, and they're moving around just fine. That's true. I wonder if the blanket's chest heaves in and out while it's sleeping, like, regularly. Do you think it lays on its side, like, in the house when the kid's around? Yeah, like, if the vacuum cleaner, like, breathes when it's sleeping, wouldn't, wouldn't it be weird to walk by your unplugged vacuum cleaner and see it, like, undulating? Like, there's something inside the bag that's alive? So I think the way they got this idea to put them all on like a chair and hook a car battery is they saw John Lovitz in their office and they were like, what are you doing, John Lovitz? That's how they get around is like this city. I, I got to go take this to my car now. Goodbye. Yeah. He's like piling up all of his supplies and the car batteries. there just to give it a like strong weight at the bottom. So he <laughs> so can doesn't stack topple more over. computers yeah. on it. He's got like, he's got like 30 Apple twos on there. His pens at the bank are like, free uh, if you're fast enough. A free fax machine. Wow. This is the best gig I've ever had. Like, at random intervals, these characters sound and look like they just took a Quaalude or something. You know, I think the writers are acting like they just took a Quaalude. I'm going to tweet about them. Were they on drugs, Brian? I guess the writers must have gotten their ideas at Taco Bell. 
Taco Bell. <laughs> My what God. a what a poopy movie. Poopy movie. Yeah, it really is. Doo -doo. I'm glad he got the sequel taken away from him. That director. I think they I think they wanted the lamp to be tired, but he just sounds like he's drunk. Would you and the lamp like pull out his little flask? Would you would you would you want these appliances after they've been in the wilderness for a week? Well, I can tell you not the blanket. Yeah, the blanket's like the blanket gave his life. That's what this is. Yeah, it's an electric blanket, so cleaning is going to be extremely difficult. It's going to be full of like fleas and parasites and dirt and all that, and nobody's it's cleaning it. Like the velveteen it. rabbit, just like just throw it away. All right, so now we're at the dream sequence. And if you look at it, cool note, the background is, like, paneled with toast on the walls, and the table's made of toast. I, how does the toaster know what a bathtub is? I think uh, the master's father may have brought him into the bathroom more than once, considering his divorce and <laughs> weighing his options. <laughs> Imagine being the toaster and the master's about to, like, you know, end, uh, unalive himself. How many murders... <laughs> He's holding the toaster. How many murders could be solved if we just interrogated the toaster long enough? These these are clearly disobeying appliances, right? So theoretically, they could kill a man. That's true. That's true. I hadn't thought about that. All right, and the blanket gets caught in the wind, and the battery's completely out of juice. And from my understanding, every character in this movie has some sort of self-sacrifice scene. So like as the wind's going, the lamp decides to Benjamin the fuck Franklin himself to just give his entire everything, and then it's really depressing. The only problem, they, no one dies. With someone should die, and like, like someone who matters should at least like, hey, look, I'm, I hurt, I'm physically injured, like I will never be able to do such and such. But none of that. They just kind of get hurt and feel okay again. I like that the battery, the supplier of power, has no say in this, and that totally works. You can just like plug a lamp into a battery and just put it out in a lightning storm, and it'll shock it, and it'll be cool. You'll lose the lamp, but the battery will glow blue and be mega charged. It just looks like they found a power up. Yeah, they did. They got they. Well, Lampy didn't. He just got a game over. Makes me he happy. He was a jerk anyway. I hated that stupid bright yeah, that, mouth piece of shit. That's the scene they took out. Is him going? Oh, he was a jerk anyway. Good riddance. He's, he's with the air conditioner now. Where they belong in appliance hell. I do love that Tony the Tiger happens to be the uh, the uh, the the vacuum blanket toaster cleaner. I like the vacuum. He's the only character who says anything relatively smart and the only dumb thing that he did was listen to the toaster the toaster really did just leave them all the certain doom so he's screaming for help you think a human being might hear that well, anytime you're in the woods and you think you hear somebody yelling at you no that's probably just a lost appliance oh that's gross I vacuum it's like i can't if i put my own cord in my mouth people call me a psycho but he does it and everybody's like yay vacuum. you gotta have some ribs removed to get your cord right the way you want it so, so he goes up to, to get the blanket. He throws the cord up somehow. The blanket and him just shoot straight down. If only the blanket was... Yeah, wait a second. I don't, I don't quite understand the logic of him throwing his cable up there, then sucking his own cable, and then getting the blanket. And then how did... Where did his cable well, go? Well, and like, the vacuum has two self-sacrifice scenes. Because he's the tough does the one. Radio, he's the macho one. I don't think one. the radio has a self-sacrifice scene, does he? He, he just kind of fucks around. The vacuum has two self-sacrifice scenes in a row, actually, because then the waterfall. Why? How did they get here? So they can't cross the waterfall. They just turned off the vacuum cleaner, but he's not plugged into anything. I, I really hope someone got fired. I hope somebody got fired for that blunder, but it still makes me angry that they got off switches, and that works, but then they don't need power, but then they do need power, but then they don't need power. You know what? You know who I hope has an off switch? These writers. Are the storyboard artists who ever messed it up? Yeah, I hope that they're unemployed. Okay, so let's let's talk about the the whole waterfall scene and that in the back of the movie, the toaster successfully articulates this mission where they like swing over, and they're smiling and it's very lovely and it's green and beautifully painted, and then in the movie it's just a big nightmare. See the the vacuum cleaner at this point tells the truth again. He's like a, a he's got like psychic powers or something. Oh, he does, because he says, uh, he says if we just waited out, we could have been fine. In the book, at the end, the, uh, they give the, the toaster and all those guys over to, uh, to a neighbor. I mean, it's the Toy Story 3 thing. It's like, like, your value is not in the person, your value is in what you do for someone else. It doesn't matter who. And in this, they're, they're, the kid just immediately needs a 1930s radio and a lamp 
Well, I think that's a good lesson, Brian. If uh, your master abandons you, you can find somebody else to dominate you and use you as a tool. Oh my God! So, so, so take it, take an ear, everyone. If your significant other does not want you, just force yourself. No, no, I'm coming. Cross a waterfall, just whatever you want, and you just got to get there. Yeah, your master doesn't have a right to let you go. You can follow them to the ends of the earth, and they have to take you. I'm not stalking you. I'm not stalking you. Oh, thank God they're all dead. The, the kid opens his window like like there's a rock thing, hits the window and hi master we're all still here it's the murderous little toaster your warranty cannot be active lamp <laughs> you are like i want a lamp with a 10-year warranty that lamp is more than 10 years old dude that lamp <laughs> all right so they're even further into the woods now they're in the jungle level of the movie they're in the big marsh ah level three yes and level three, they get really discouraged for some reason because they, they just got out of the first forest and then now the second forest and we have entered the third forest. Yeah, they entered the swamp in Elden Ring. Yeah, like what? <laughs> Where are they going? There's a road! There there are a lot of ways to find out where the city is. They don't even try to follow the North Star or anything. They don't even know where North is. Okay, and then we have the dream sequence where the toaster's like, I, I can't get into water no matter what. And the toaster just starts going for a little... <laughs> a little walk through the marsh. Yeah, wait a minute. He's he's splashing in it. He's gonna get sepsis or something. This, you know what? I'm gonna say you know this this could have used a redraft. Like like it's not horrible. It really isn't. It's a great fun movie. But they are just sad because the script is like. And then they all got sad. But they're they're in the same woods. Like it's the same scene. Look out! The vacuum cleaner is gonna get cholera. I like that when the vacuum gets sucked into the thing. He's still being a complete a hole to everybody. Yeah, you know what? I, I respect him for that. I would do the same thing. I'd be like, oh, good job. Well done. <laughs> good going, everyone. Good, good job, job, Brian. Now we're all going to die. Thanks, guys. Well, th this reminds me of what we were talking about. You remember when I was walking to work and there was like a crackhead perched on top of a car and the cops were like chasing him like Benny Hill? It's, yeah. and, you, and he ran for the lime bike and then tried to like turn it on. And, and I was like, why would you do that? And you were like, he wanted like his last two seconds of freedom to be about his choice. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah like if you're gonna die you, know, you do want that like if, if you and i've been there like I've, I've had near death situations and that's an honest writing when you are once you accept it, it's like fuck i'm gonna die the old pretense like ha, 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 oh, oh, i'm gonna die oh i'm gonna die goes out the window and you just want to be like ah fuck you no that's true yeah no it's okay i do like that when the radio is going down into the quicksand that his music <laughs> like like he, he it's time to play a song I, you know what else would you do as a radio? That makes sense too. They only make sense to me when they're dying. They're they're honest. They are more honest. It's like SpongeBob. Like like you know when someone's fake and you hate it, but like he's he's legit. They're yeah. all being them. All all the stupid posit all the stupid pretenses of I care about you and life matters. You're like oh well, I guess I'm gonna die then. It's your fucking fault. Okay, we get to the to the tech like, guy. You, the what what do we call it? the junk collector? The nerd. He's going down the road. There it is. We found it. Yeah. There's the road. He's <laughs> on the right road. He, he just got into town. It took him like five seconds. Man. So, you think they would have seen the road from that waterfall? He's hanging the appliances on rusty hooks. Yeah. You know, now that you mention it, that's a bit weird. Uh, this guy This guy has a subreddit somewhere. I like that he has a door with just private on there, like, uh, in case someone confuses it at a restaurant, I like I guess. the tools on the thing like Batman 81, like, show me the mirror. Mr. Toaster, you see what I have to work with. Why are his marshmallows brown? Well, I told you that when I was when I was little, I asked my dad, could I have whatever he's eaten? I wanted those too. I'm like, that looks delicious, but they're brown. I never saw the brown marshmallows at the grocery you store. You know what? They make them. Now. Chocolate marshmallows exist. I don't eat them. I guess that's what they are. Do you are. like marshmallows? I don't, I don't, uh. I like, I can eat one. Right? I can have one and marshmallow, one and then corn. I'm good. And then you're like, I'm done. Yeah. Oh, that was some nice sugar. Yeah, dude, there's something about it. A little Beavis laugh from the Peter Lorre lamp. <laughs> <laughs> Pe dude, Peter Lorre was really, like, was he dead by now? Because the 80s, the 80s loved Peter Lorre caricatures. Ah, uh, jeez, I'm pretty sure he was dead. I love a bad, but, a bad uh, Peter Lorre, by the way. If you ever saw the Ren and Stimpy, like, adult cartoon, where, where they replace Stimpy, but he sounds almost identical, and then Ren's like, hello, Stimpy. Hello, Steepy. Yes, yes. Right, right. That's better yes, than what John yes, Kay did. And that that's... Dude, dude, that Ren voice is the worst thing John Kay has ever done. Do you think he just forgot? I, I, you know, uh, the guy who played Big the Cat also, like, 
he kind of went from like to like ah, I'm being the cat. So, oh, it's yeah, Duke. Yeah, Duke. yeah, yeah. It's like how uh, repetition breeds contempt. Yeah, it may just be that their voices change. Everybody's like, oh, your voice changes when you get older. No, it changes the more you that's, use it, too. It's true. like a, like an instrument, except you can't retune it. I like the nerd's laugh as he kills things. Like, <laughs> that's the laugh the guy who put my jumper cables together. He was like, look at that. <laughs> and that's a laugh you can trust. That's the laugh of someone who's going home to mom. There must be a version of this scene where they treat him like the doctor instead of the, instead of the, the Ed Gein of this movie. Yeah, he, he's definitely got, like, a Leatherface thing. Like, a Leatherface opened a shop for furniture, like a furniture store. Uh, yeah. Or a gain furniture yeah, store. Yeah, Tarantino had, had made uh, Pulp Fiction a little faster. They'd have ball gags on in the scene. They just have this song ready to go, huh? Yeah, every goddamn day with this song. He's like, oh, neighbors are playing that stupid song again. Oh, there's a Joan Rivers joke in My this. favorite part about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, got, I like it. It's got, like, a musical quality to it. It's not, like, something you would hear from a band this is something you hear in a this, play this is something that feels like the indie portion of this movie not the not the disney-fied stuff oh yeah if this was a disney movie they would have made it less spooky they did a good job making the 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 guy likable the the junk collector wait that fridge is alive there's there's an alive fr- they they left that fridge to die yeah! they left that fridge to they kill the fridge! Do you think they just kind of... It's like when you're working a really shitty job and they just consign themselves to, like, a life of... I'm a fridge. I'm just not going to talk anymore. Do you think items that have their Alexa in them, do you think they're, like... Do you think they're alive? If my Alexa's alive, then I need to get rid of it really God, soon. God, do you... Do, yeah, you got to burn it, dude. Do you remember when those commercials came out and they're like, it's always listening? Good night, Alexa. I love you. And God, that was creepy. I mean, you know, for a lot of people, they would love to be surrounded by these appliances, having goofy little adventures all day. It would drive me insane. I'd be angry, but I know people would be like, finally, I'm happy. Ash wasn't very happy about it. Jesus Christ. You'd think this guy would be happy. He seems pretty lonely. I mean, he's got his dog. That's it do, nice. It does but... seem like they, they ought to, like, be nice to him. This 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 could all be solved with a nice sit down. Yeah, why don't they just jump out and attack him, if anything? He doesn't look like he could put up much of a fight. Kirby, stab him. Dude, do you remember with... I'm, I'm just going to keep talking about Alexis for a minute. So many people I've met are like, I don't want a government listening to me. Hey, Alexa, can you tweet that the government shouldn't listen to me? I hate the government, but I got all my smartphones and my Alexa and my blanket that talks. Oh, the shot where they reflect him is beautiful. It looks like a 3D render. He looks like he's getting killed by the Necronomicon in that screaming it shot. It looks like he saw whatever was at the end of... Uh, <laughs> inside the, uh, the trunk in Repo Man. Uh, <laughs> he's he stared he stared into the mirror that shows the world what they'll think of you when you're dead. <laughs> we have to disguise ourselves from the humans. Wait, so they knock the guy out and then they all run away. But they couldn't have done that. They couldn't have done that any other day of the week. I mean, yeah, they c- like when the stores close. You know how much how high his insurance is because this keeps happening. I'm sure this is not the first time. All my shit ran away again. I like the uh, I like the tape recorder running away with the pencil sharpener. They got a nice dynamic. Oh man, dude, I I ship them. I could smell that on the screen. Yeah, that, that <laughs> the was baby raw Electrical sexual energy. They steal a baby carriage now. Yeah, wait a minute. Where's the baby? That wasn't in the appliance store. They stole a baby carriage. I guess they just put the baby on the ground and go. You you be safe. Look, now. they're on a road, dude. They made it to a road. They're, look, that's progression. The characters are learning, and they're on top of a hill. How could you miss the city either? Boy, and they're on top of the hill, and they just go sliding down straight into traffic. There's no traffic in this giant hillside city. It, it was really hard to render back then. You know how hard it was to draw more than two things? Yeah, actually, it was probably really hard now that you mentioned it, Brian. <laughs> Man, it's not like like in the new Beavis and Butthead, where, where they kind of have just puppets built, and you can just make them walk around. We live in such a great time to animate. Yeah, yeah, it's so much easier. I don't like how big this guy's apartment is. Plugsy looks like the grimace. Oh, the kid passes right by him. He's going to the cabin, too. They... It's painful. They could have just waited. They could have just waited. I really like when they're in the city. You see that big TDK shot. Oh, and the freeze frame of the thing. When they're looking at the phone books, like the Terminator, and they're looking and it's like Pan Peter. Yeah, Pan Peter. Like, there's Disney references, and then there's some locations. Uh, Yellow, yellow Blanket, yeah. Master Young, Radio Loud. <laughs> And there's nothing really interesting there. They just had to fill it in. Now, can I can I go on my rant about the restoration that's going on with this movie? Oh, please do. I don't know anything about restoring a movie. Okay, so this is like a third generation print. Like it's it's like they took this out to festivals 
they got their praise and they were done. And then Disney got that print. So it's the more time, it's like a VHS. The more you play it, the more fucked up it gets. And then, uh, oh yeah. When you do a film print like that, you know, it gets a little more degraded, a little more degraded. And I think Akira is the only time in history that kept every cell. So they reshot it later. So like the Simpsons, you can't do that with, you know, uh, this, you can't do that with, I've seen cells go for like thousands. So there's no way to restore it unless you got that print and rescanned it. And someone's doing that right now. But the problem is the whole movie is flickering and it looks like dog shit. You would have to basically, you would have to basically take every single frame and like digitally re-add the color. There's no other way because it's like you'd have to stabilize it. I think the director did that intentionally to make sure that nobody could make money off it afterwards. <laughs> I wonder. Um, I heard the director's working. Good luck transferring this one, jackass. <laughs> <laughs> the um, uh, if I were working with the director, what I would do is I would I would extract all the line work and then just add the color back in. It wouldn't be perfect, but there's there's no way you could fix it besides like going back in and preserving the line work. That's that's it. And is that the widescreen cut? That they got because you told me earlier that this was like originally done in widescreen and just never got released as that's that. what i heard but the guy who scanned the print it's four by three so i i thought it was widescreen i mean considering how much everybody's probably paid which i'm sure is next to nothing uh i can understand why they didn't preserve it like you think from from the perspective of a viewer like why didn't they preserve it this is just glorious i love it so much to where this was two years for somebody and they went through hell then at the end of it they didn't get paid very much and then after that they're told by the way you don't own the rights to it god yeah and that's an interesting thing is you got to pay for those prints like the one of the godfather is just destroyed like the godfather print they i think it's made of five different prints from different collectors just because it was so degraded and then you take it and you make a copy and now you've got a copy of the shitty print it, it's only going to get worse every generation. Also, you and I know that, like, film film is highly combustible. You might as well have, like, fucking napalm inside a safe. Oh, they used to... They used to, st- they used to store old films on uh, kerosene. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So not only not only were they, not only was it already flammable, but the fluid that they stored it in was also highly flammable, <laughs> and everything is just corrosive, and it just erodes and dies so it's fast. Rough. The preservation was... There's a lot of there's a lot of things that we only have because somebody had like an eight millimeter print and converted it to VHS and that's that's what we have. That's, that's true. It. Um, Steven Spielberg keeps all his movies in a salt mine. I think that's also where he keeps Aperture Science. I think that's where he keeps. Uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Anyways, directors are fun. So a a one one three that was is that a was thing. new at the time, right? The the a one thirteen. What's it represent? It, it was the class at Cal Arts where the where the Cal Arts style was made. Oh, I hate Cal Arts. Everything that's Cal Arts is bad. The internet told me so, Brian. Dude, it's weird that every year a new art style comes out and it's called the Cal Arts style. It's 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 animation. It's just art. Yeah, I mean they had to learn from someone, right? Yeah, that's like you know what that lamp had the only appropriate response to seeing talking yeah, uh, but, things. Yeah. That- it's like, oh, damn. And a lamp opens <laughs> the door. Oh, there's stuff in its outside? It's like that joke. Yeah, the lamp opens the door and sees another lamp. And what does he say? Holy shit, a talking lamp. Oh, a ta- you guys should be inside. Get out. Leave. Leave. What are you doing? You're ruining it. I would love if he went into the cabin to go get his stuff and then his parents were there and his intervention. <laughs> it's like, look, I know you really love your blanket, but the appliances aren't alive. I mean, oh, they're all having a party. With- <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the design of that computer. It looks like an Aqua Teen Hunger Force character. <laughs> it does. Okay, so they're in the living room, and the mom's presumably in the house somewhere, like, hiding, because all her shits come to life. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Grandma's probably on some kick-ass old people pills, and she's just like, yeah, this is normal. Okay, yeah, so the dude is obviously a soul that got trapped in that. Was that the American Dad where he's like, welcome to the Rabbit Ears show? It's something like that, yeah. Yeah, that's that's the guy that got in the TV before Stan Smith. Okay, yeah, so all, as someone who has, has tried to clean an apartment once in my life, like, they spent years cleaning that place, and it's just trashed, and, and that's the only time the master will ever see how they ever treated the apartment. I like that the master got to see that they killed the refrigerator, and that they killed the air conditioner. That's true. We all know the scene. chalk outline around the fridge. (laughs) There's the bright, the, the bright, the, the detective that is the microwave, yeah, the... The microwave diaries. If you look at the walls in the house, they are clean up to where the blanket can reach. 
Oh wow! And then they're just they're gross. Yeah, how do they? Yeah, that's a little detail. I like that, but it it, it just raises more questions. Well, they could just stack the master's belongings again. I mean, you know. Yeah, all of his belongings have little like toaster footprints on them. So the appliances start singing a song to demonstrate how great they are, and it it feels like money or nothing's starting to play. It does look like it's about to be like, you know, real science, science kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, the Rick and Morty stuff starts flying by. We used to call it the weird science stuff. Now it's the I Rick guess and Morty. We used Morty. to call it the Twilight Zone stuff. Yeah, it was Twilight yeah, yeah, Zone, Morty, then weird science, then Rick and Morty. Just math flying through the air. I, you know, it's future times when there's equations. Because we didn't have math in the 60s. I like how they hate the TV, you, so they do establish that this is definitely about being new. Yeah, they, they don't hate them stuff, because just, they're intruders. Just, they hate them because they're new. So if they were like new appliances coming to the door, they'd be like, come on in. I love that they're 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 just talking shit about how obsolete they are, and all I can think about is how much it's going to cost to rip that shit out of their paneling. This land is cursed. So where's God during all of this? I don't think he was paying attention. Especially when this movie got made. <laughs> oh yeah, the director said that uh, everything you wanted and more is uh, a promo from like the 80s for like brand new electronics. And the trash where they belong. I do love that with them going in the trash, it's just this silent, depressing scene. In, in Toy Story, they make it like a horror movie. Where, it, like, I can't grab them in time! We gotta go! Yeah, here it's uh, honestly pr a pretty realistic expectation of what it's like to be thrown in the trash. The kid fixes the air conditioner, and then the air conditioner destroys everyone who's left inside the cabin. He gets an axe, and then Scatman Crothers comes in and goes, I sure hope no one's possessed by demons in here. <laughs> He's crying. Oh, that's a nice thing. I they didn't have to go that far. That was nice. For, for all my jams of the movie, yeah, you can you can appreciate the fact that he fixed the air conditioner and it was like, oh my god, you do care. But really, he's just thinking, oh boy, my house is cold now. And also, he didn't fix the cracks in the wall or anything. Like it's weird that he fixed it. It was nice of him. Yeah, the whole place is trash too. And he's like, who did this? <laughs> okay, so for thematic reasons, they have to have trash piled up to the ceiling, which is pretty great to see. Ah, it's, it's cartoonish. I like that. I like the cartoony, like, this is how a dump works, right? They just pile it up as high as humanly possible. Yeah, it looks like nobody works there. I like it. So, so do people work there, or is that magnet alive? Because they get chased by a giant magnet. Maybe it's part of how they keep the secret, right? Like, when stuff breaks down, it gets, you know, lippy and movie and kind of wants to be like, I'm alive! Help me! Help me! I'm alive! This magnet's here to, like, correct that. That's why they gotta crunch it in little perfect cubes, because if they don't, it'll, like, come back out and be alive again. It, it would be really funny if, if it cut to one of the cubes and you just hear... There's, like, a thousand screams, like... <laughs> like a thousand <laughs> damn souls going... <laughs> or it's like, it's like, nope. It's like, nope, and when you, when you see the thing in the sky, you just hear people screaming. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he has a whole row of cars ready, and they rehearse their bits. I mean, they've been here for a while. The, the whole place looks like it hasn't been tended to in years, so that magnet's got his work cut out for him. You think the guy who actually, like, you know, does a, his work here is going to see the magnet in the conveyor belt running on its own and crushing shit and go, oh, neat, somebody's here today. Then he's going to go yeah, into his little cockpit and go, like, wait a automated. minute. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's going to think it's automated. It's going to be automated. Like, wow, those computers from Japan are sure smart. Yeah, it is so confusing. Can the, are they like desktops where you can change what the TV looks like? Like, it'd be someone else. I mean, how long is he on this TV? So we can assume that this TV's just been, like, talking to them personally like a friend for, like, 20, 30 years. When I was little, I used to talk to the TV and, like, think they were talking back to me. Oh, you're dumb. I'm talking, like, 25. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At any age, that's pretty stupid. <laughs> I was two. Yeah, fair enough. So was I. Oh, I never noticed when the when the one car's being put in there, you can see the steering wheel trying to veer off as he's going into the, the crusher. Oh, that's sad. It's <laughs> the sad little car. That one's ready to die. I'm a classic. Time to go. Oh, man. Especially like it's that kind of race car. I bet if you scra if you found that car body, it would be worth like $100,000. So the other funny angle to this is that it's destroying really valuable stuff. That's true, but it's got to go somewhere. Do you ever... I always think about like... Um, this part of Seattle I live in was built on a landfill, and I always think about that. Like, what kind of crazy shit is down there? There's got to be, like, old newspapers and, like, cars, and who the fuck knows? 
Oh, Brian, this has little to do with Brave Little Toaster, but I saw footage of uh, dump workers once. They found a flashlight, and the guy, like, picked it up and spat on it and used it for a few minutes and then threw it back in the pile. What do you What do you mean he used it? Was this a live leak or a YouTube it video? Was, it was, like, a, not a YouTube video, but definitely not a live leak video either. Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> All I know is that if those things were alive, I bet they'd want to die. Which, which, yeah, which part of the cinematic universe is that? I don't know, but it, I think it is weird for the dark themes that this show has that there is an appliance that's like, crush me, cube me, please, I want to be cubed, oh god, I've been alive since 1922, <laughs> like, please end me. It's like a Justin Roiland character, crush me, somebody crush me! Kill me, kill me now! Kill, kill me, me, do it now! Do it, do, do it. it, it'll be fine! I want to die! I want to die, yeah! <laughs> do it! Yeah! Oh, and, and when you see the guy on, uh, on the TV, when you see rabbit ears talk, He's going through photos. There's a there's a picture, a Xerox of a naked lady in there. Ooh, spicy. I know. And then they put like stars over her boobies because because now I don't know what I'm seeing. The director Jerry Reese. He was talking about how much he he was impressed that they got away with putting an interracial couple in the movie. Oh yeah. And I, I mean I didn't I even guess, think about yeah, it until yeah. you mentioned that it was. I, I guess it is. Yeah, Latina. It's interracial. Oh yeah, yeah. I it's something. It's something. I don't know if it's worth, like, grabbing a bunch of credit for, but... No, it's... They tried. I, I guess it's hard... It's hard to imagine a world where they're like, yeah, we snuck that through. The kid's at the dump, the TV's talked him into it, and the first thing he sees is a photo of himself as a kid. Yeah, that would freak me out a little bit, especially since it's been so well cared for. I really love that shot of them laying down, like, oh, the master's coming, and then he, he gets called off by the girlfriend... The girlfriend may or may not be a hero, depending on how you watch this movie. Maybe an She's accidental hero. An she 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 keeps dissuading the the kid. Go and get the new stuff. It'll break faster. We can buy newer stuff. You don't need that old toaster. That shadow kind of looked like a big yeah, dick I'm looming over them. You can cut this, but I just thought it was funny. Oh damn it! That's gonna make it in, isn't it? Ah, the magnet. The magnet has superpower. It, boop. Yeah, I like the idea that, like, the Crusher's occupation is to kill his fellow alive things. But he also Man, has, to, he like, has to keep it living. hidden. Look at, look at him. He's like, oh, can't alert him. But it's like you're moving still. <laughs> also, why didn't they sue this place oh, afterwards? Man. I mean, that, that right there, oh, that's sure. a lawsuit they, right you, there. You haven't seen the sequel. The, the toaster climbs to the top here. The kid's, the kid's trapped. The Crusher, for some reason, puts him in danger. And the toaster's looking down from a giant magical pile of garbage. And the whole world turns red, and it's this incredibly tense scene. And ballsy, dude. I love it's his a hands. Ballsy way to do the movie. His hands near the crusher, because yeah. you can just see the well-drawn fingers. It's like, oh no, please don't crush his actual living person hand. It goes from cartoon oh, fingers to like real fingers. That's how you know it's serious. Oh, I love the toaster jumping then, in the gears. That's awful. Oh god, yeah, dude. I got choked up when I saw that because I was like, there's no way writing-wise you can get out of that. That's just such a great sacrifice. They had to have their body I mean, horror moment. Let, rest his head. And they can't kill the kid. They, they can't can have him get his, his hands caught in the smasher. If he loses a hand, yeah. he just went to a R rating right there. That feels like something out of an Arrow movie. Like It was smart to draw the hands back. so realistically and well in that scene because it does give you the slight idea. It's like, oh, fuck, they're really going to crush his hand. And then it's like, no, it's actually the toaster that ends up <laughs> getting the worst of it. Oh, man. But the fact that he somehow hammers every ding out of the toaster and it's perfect. Like, you know he went back to that part store and, like, got... I'm sure the kid fixed all these problems. He got him out of the... He picked him up and took him to the ER and he's like, oh, I got new toaster parts. Yeah, he's got his, like, new uh, Mitsubishi toaster that with a smartphone in it or whatever. Or the 80s, 90s equivalent of it. And he's, like, pulling guts oh, out yeah. of it. It's like, no, don't kill me! Ah! Ah! I'm dying! Ah! Ah! And he puts him in the brave little toaster, and Toaster's like, yeah. Oh, give me some more of them new parts. I, that new filament feels good. Mm. I feel stronger. I feel stronger right, and than then, ever. Now they're, now they're in the car, and the car doesn't talk, but I imagine the car saying, what road did you guys take? And they're like, what the fuck's a road? <laughs> <laughs> What's a road? <laughs> what is that? Well, it's only like 15 minutes to the cabin. Hardship. How long did you guys take to get there? It's like, it took us like five days. They all look at the John Lovitz oh, character. He's like, don't look at me. I didn't direct this. <laughs> Let me tell you about the wilderness. Well, first of all, Hillary's not there. It's like, all we figured out about the road is the that Biden's laptop is a really important issue that we should be concerned about. And I want to find Biden's laptop because I think it might be in danger. We need to go rescue our appliance friend, guys. That was the original plot for Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars. Yeah, it was Biden's laptop running away from Alex Jones. 
<laughs> what is there to say about this movie? It, uh, it's good. Some it, of the best voiceover. It, it's yeah. genuinely good. Yeah. It's got a good cast. You got Phil Hartman and Phil Hartman and Tim Stack and Phil Hartman. Louis Conti. And Phil Hartman. Man, so how old were you when you saw the movie? Oh, geez. I must have been like eight because I got it secondhand on an old, like, ratty VHS. It looks as good as the one we're watching. It, I mean, I was young, so it may as well have just been this cut because I've watched it on an old little uh, Zenith, right? Oh, yeah, with the tape player built in. Right, right. So I I didn't have taste. I was like, oh, my God, colors and sound? Thank goodness. I was getting really bored just sitting here in the darkness alone. <laughs> That's okay, because the writers didn't have taste. I like the, I like the movie, all in all. You can think about it strategically, or as you said, it's a very utilitarian story to where everything has a purpose, and that's what it does. So when you think about how did the cable get longer, how do they get away with uh, moving without being plugged in, why even bring the battery along at all? Even as a kid, that stuff bothered me, because as a kid, you're not stupid. You're not, like, completely stupid anyways. Like you're a lot more analytical too. Yeah, you see, you see little like gaps. Like, hey, why did the uh, why did the vacuum cleaners car cord just get way longer? And why, why aren't they plugged in? And why are they all running in different directions? And what why does the blanket even need to be plugged in at all? He's not heating up anything. And you know those those questions run through your mind. It doesn't matter because it's it's a comedy story for kids. It's it's uh it's dark. The the director like. Jerry Reese has a photo of it, like a of the poster in his house, and it's it's the shot of the toaster looking at the fire in the dream sequence. That was the original poster for the movie. Like they really wanted to go for like a slightly darker version of a Disney movie. Ultimately, I think they achieved yeah, that it, by the end. By the uh, as you mentioned earlier, each character has its own sacrifice. The radio does nothing, but you know that's fine. The toaster jumping into the gears and like literally trying. It's like I know how to save the master. I'll kill myself. That's pretty. Uh, yeah, intense. learn a lesson. It's not a great lesson, but it is. <laughs> it's pretty earned though that death sequence. Oh yeah. Considering that they undo it, they didn't have to get rid of the toaster or kill the toaster. But like, it would have been neat if they had some indication that they got parts for him or you know. Oh, as a kid, if when I saw this, if I if the toaster jumped in there and died and nobody tried to fix it, I would be angry because I'm like, no, but you can fix things. So this is this makes me angry. Yeah, but like they could just they could they could go find a part. It's like one extra shot. I think would have helped a lot. It does seem like towards the last like fifteen minutes after the dumpster scene, they're they're just like wrap it up, wrap it up, wrap it up. We're running out, we're running out of budget here. It does it does seem like they're rushing to the end. But yeah, it, well man, they I'm spend uh, what like uh, over an hour in the forest and like I guess three different forests or four different forest biomes, like it's Minecraft or something. And then from that point on, you're on the road where they should have been the entire time. So they went through five video game levels worth of forest. Once you get out of the electronic shop or the repair shop, everything goes on 2x speed as far as story and progression goes. You barely get to meet the other appliances, for example. They hype them up real That's good. They get true. a whole song. They get names. They do things. And the sewing machine doesn't do anything but smile at them awkwardly. That's it. The whole beginning sequence where they're in the, the pond, totally unnecessary... I would have cut a lot of that. You you could basically take the middle point and kind of put it in the first third, and I think you'd have a lot more solid of a story. I think ultimately you would have had a better story if you just cut the pawn sequence and put that effort into the end. But you also got to remember, it's for little guys. It's for kids. We're, we're full-grown adults watching a, a a movie about toasters. So there has to be that part <laughs> where... True. that That part there, Brian, isn't for me. That's for, like, a three-year-old who's gonna be bored by then he's gonna be like man i ain't seen nobody dance or scream in a minute and i'm getting fussy well true but it, it's weird to think it was a sundance movie oh really so this was technically made for a general audience not just a child audience huh it was made for sundance believe it or not and they liked it and it got a lot of screenings in fact theaters felt bad kind of for for the lack of appreciation it got and they showed it Sort of like old serials, they would do like 20 minute segments in between other films. Like like at the very beginning. They got fucked so hard on this movie. Like the whole story of how Disney was interested because Disney people worked on it. But also that they were like, Disney got the rights to it to air it on TV the same week that another film company was going to distribute it in theaters. And since Disney won out, they were like, no thank you, we don't want to show your movie in theaters. So all that money went away. Along with the widescreen uh, render of it. 
just trashed because you know they wouldn't yeah. they probably wouldn't show it in theaters in four by three right my it was back in the old days but like i that that's kind of gone with history this movie got kind of a raw deal like animation back then believe it or not was harder and more expensive to produce than it is today oh god you did it all on paper and then if that looked good they used to call them lunch boxes we we did them in college they're these these big like rigs with a big tv on top and you can photograph one by one all your different your different cells and then go all right this looks good this looks shitty that's how they did this whole movie and then you got to go color it they spent like most of a year in korea god it is what a nightmare just to make that but props to everyone involved you lived your dream you got disney's attention and then disney just fucked you so hard and the cycle's complete thank you disney for preserving our entertainment thank you make more marvel movies more marbles yeah, dude, that's that's crazy. It's just such a different time. Well, as you mentioned, college, right? Like you, w- these days, yeah. you can have independent animators who are educated. A lot of them are educated, but there's plenty of people who never spent a day in school to learn animation. They just got their little Wacom tablet, a copy of Flash or whatever, and they make something. To do Brave Little Toaster, you would have to go to an art school. You'd have to try to be an animator, and then you'd have to learn things like how do we ship it to Korea? How do I communicate with that? Like, what's the vector here? You didn't have Disney to help you. You had to figure it out on your own. So That's true. there's a high chance that working at Disney was half the education that they got. So it's not only that you got to go to school, but if you didn't work at Disney, you wouldn't know about the Korean line of things and who to call and what to do and all that. That would be a huge pain. God. And it's, it's such a different bar of quality now, too. You know how many animators we see on Twitter just begging for jobs? Oh, yeah. Uh, even when they finish, uh, like I, I've known people who've done TV shows and the minute the show's over, it's like right to I need work. Like, they'll have a season two of the show that they're working on, but, you know, they're just going to cycle these people in and out because that's how you can do it. And there's more people that can do it than there's ever been in the past. And summer breaks are a thing in animation. Once a show's up, you have like five, four or five months without any work at all. Yeah, and they don't pay the animators a whole lot either. So that you got most of that I know have a side hustle or some other thing going on, or they're working on multiple things. Yeah. So, like, even if you have the, the most reliable animation jobs on the planet are awful. They're just terrible. <laughs> it's an industry of lies and hatred, everybody. It's It costs a lot of money, but it's also somehow the cheapest medium. You notice that? That's true. I think it has everything to do with how replaceable everybody is. I can't replace uh, Tony Danza on Full House. I can't just take Tony Danza away and recast him. I can, but the show's going to suffer for it. If they took Urkel from Family Matters, which Family Matters wasn't even supposed to be about Urkel, but if they took Urkel from Family Matters and got rid of him, the whole <laughs> show would be dead. It would just be dead. But if they fire well, they a director on The Big Simpsons, Bang who yeah. cares? Well, and the other thing about that is, back then it was a time when it was like, you directed The Simpsons, and then you went on to direct Brave Little Toaster 5. And now we live in such a world that's like, uh, you got fired off The Simpsons, all right, go to Rick and Morty, and then after that, do some Beavis and Butthead. There's six billion of you in a constant state of cycle. Yeah, so the wages also have gone down, too, because there's more people to draw from. Uh, pardon the pun. And... We're so fucking bitter. Well, yeah, okay, I'm I'm, I'm bitter, but I, I haven't <laughs> gone through the ringer, right? So my, my bitter nature comes from nowhere. Well, and as an animator, you make about $15 an hour in almost any medium I've seen. But you know what I mean about, like, as an animator, you got to try out for a new job basically every month. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, this doesn't come... Like, just like me riffing on the movie, it doesn't come from a place of bitterness or hatred. It comes from a place of uh, empathy for people who worked on it. Mine comes from hatred. Oh, well, yeah, you've gone through the ringer as an animator to where you spent all this time and money and effort to put all your dreams together. I want to make a cartoon, and I, I think I'll be able to have a house maybe, you know? Everybody has a house, right? Maybe I'll have a house. And it's like, well, as an animator, yeah, no, you'll be. A house. If you want to be an animator, you'll be living in LA and you'll make a whole lot of money that goes onto your rent. And by the end of it, you'll have nothing but a, you know, credit as an animator. Oh, yeah. And if you, uh, if you unionize like Bojack, the whole show's going to get canceled. But I promise, I absolutely promise, no one got fired. They didn't get fired. We just stopped making the show. Yeah, exactly. On a, on a magical, artistic, in a perfect world setting. You know, you are not replaceable, but as history has dictated, there are two sequels to this movie. Neither of them have the original creators involved whatsoever. Um, specifically, Lack of John Lovitz, which seems, 
If John Lovitz can be a little Nicky, he can be he can be a brave little he, poster. He's an acquirable person, but there must have been like they must have been paying nothing, or they must have been unreasonable about like he must have been working on something else. Maybe he's like, hey, can you maybe yeah. like push it back a week? And they're like, no, brave little toaster comes out tomorrow. That's kind of how they made those sequels too. I mean, it, I we might touch on them later, but they're they're very. It seems like they made it all with no retakes. It it just came out like they're just like ah right, number two. Don't. Put it out. Yeah, well, that was the style at the time. Oh, I guess that was right when they were doing, like, Bambi 2 also. Bambi yeah. 2, uh, soon after that, like, wasn't Aladdin 2 straight to VHS, Lion King 2 straight to VHS. Disney got on that hard, and they were right to. Yeah. You got your and, Homer Simpson um, genie. Was back when, yeah. God, that's weird. And they recorded all the stuff with uh, Williams, and they just left it out. They, they screwed him on his, like, stipulations about not using him to advertise the movie. Oh, that's rough. I may not have that 100% yeah. correct. You might want to double check that factoid. It's something along those lines, though, to where it's like, they could get John sure. Lovitz, they could get Robin Williams, but... I got the second one for God knows why. I think they had a big push in the late 90s. What, weird early memories. I remember that that song, you know, the, the City of Light. Like, that song. I remember all the other movies opened with that, and they had that really that really chocolatey voice guy who's like... You can now buy the uh, the Brave Little Toaster soundtrack on on vinyl and CD. Oh, uh, like, now now the vinyl thing's like a that? joke. Like you want a vi- you want a vinyl copy of the Doom Eternal soundtrack? It's a shame they they've never upscaled this movie. But maybe we're just grown men complaining that. I don't know. It's it's not like you have to shut up about your art critique because it's a children's movie or because. And, you know, you could be watching, you could be watching something with real emotion in it, like Batman versus Superman, to where real important things happen. Not this brave little toaster thing for Dude, little kids. <laughs> I, I let on that subject. This feels more believable than Batman versus Superman. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I've, I've not seen that movie, but I saw the Martha bit, and I'm like that makes no sense. Yeah, the like the battery and then not being plugged in the battery and roaming around. That is me nitpicking the hell out of this movie. Right, but, but but like just picture Zack Snyder's Brave Little Toaster. Like I actually it's like a that. Desolate wasteland. Yeah, I would watch that. I'd watch Holy that. I get so angry at it too, but I'd love it. After you're done sucking and blowing, you're just empty. You will spark. And then the <laughs> air conditioner kills itself. The toaster's like the master gets older. He thinks I do not love him because he ages. I cannot tell him that he's right. Well, it it's built on a TV budget too, so you could totally do it. I it it's weird that the my understanding is another company got it and tried to make an all CGI reboot and it's Disney got a hold of it again. It's now in the hands of Jerry Reese, the guy who made the first one. With any justice in the world, if we don't even get like a 1080p cut of this movie, there may be a sequel. But I'm to understand it's live action mixed with CG. That'll work. And, I don't see why not. It's, it, we're well past the age of Roger yeah. Rabbit to where it was, like, really hard. I mean, there's still difficulties in it, but you've seen that Sonic movie to where, like... Did you ever see the, the Pee-wee reboot? Uh, I didn't, but I heard good things. Okay, they should just do it like that. It's the same movie. It's it's sort of a soft reboot. It's the same plot. Like, Pee-wee's got to go from A to B. It's the same plot! Yeah. But it's just full of different little jokes. You could totally do that with... To- it would be great. I, I would love just a remake that's just different. Or reimagining just the same product. Repetition so isn't re- necessarily a sin. But yeah, but you you have a lot of room to tell a story that's, you know, for all the emotion they get out of this, it is very limited. You could definitely have them go to a few other places. I could compare that your your critique there to another series. Think about like Halloween and how in every Halloween movie they gotta like mess with it and fuss with yep. it, right? To where if they just stuck with what they did in the first movie and did it a second time, that would have been a lot more entertaining in the long run i think i think a lot of people agree with that sentiment not everybody everybody some there's people out there that really love a halloween h2o and they love very little toaster goes to mars or whatever but you gotta admit like more of the same wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing no no more of the same is fine those blumhouse the first blumhouse one is, is a good example like i don't want to see that the toaster is like a manufacturing product of some cult oh yeah like, no that would, i mean that'd be funny but that's like a robot chicken skit you know yeah, we got to start writing that right now. Yeah, get Seth Green on the horn. Seth Green, are you watching? Leave me alone. <laughs> what secrets do you keep? Why do you get to keep a show this long? Remember it? it? Was it that? Did something happen there? Was he in it? Yeah, he was the uh, little ginger kid in it. Oh my god! I know, right? When Tim I learned Curry's that, I was that. like, "Oh, it's it's so obvious now that I see it." But you know, I wouldn't have guessed. I just saw 
I just saw him in X Files, and he was really funny. He played a stoner kid. Yeah, he's been in movies forever. So yeah, there's a there's a good chance he gets to keep Robot Chicken because something awful happened. That's nice. Thanks for bringing that up, Ryan. You know, Brave Little Toaster is a really <laughs> good movie, and I like it. And who knows what happened to Seth Green? That's <laughs> awful. Why would you say that? <laughs> oh, that's the original movie. Is that the lamp was holding? <laughs> He was holding the toaster. Trash goes in the trash. <laughs> trash goes in the trash. Yeah. <laughs> that would be such a better movie. Trash goes in the trash can. <laughs> I love that because that's a, that's a genuinely good bully line. It's almost like that was ripped straight from a movie itself. <laughs> what if we find out later that Bill Murray and Seth Green were in a movie and the movie has him do that and the whole admission was just that... <laughs> We were in a movie where Bill Murray held me over a trash can. Oh, they just cut out the in a movie part. Bill Murray held me over the can. Yeah, yeah, cut, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, well, this is awful. Yep. And then, <laughs> oh man, is Bill Murray okay? Then you post a picture of him in Groundhog's Day with the toaster next to the bathtub. Oh, one thing I don't think I pointed out is that TDK financed a lot of this, and I don't think kids know what TDK is anymore. TDK made televisions, didn't they? Television, I think, and they definitely made VHS. Like, they, I remember having stacks of blank TDK. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember seeing those. Now that you mentioned a little uh, red, green, blue. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, tape manufacturer. They probably paid for half the movie. Oh, I'm sure that's how they got it published on VHS. I'm sure that, that must have been their original plan. Like, well, if we can't get it in theaters, we can sell it at uh, Walgreens for $5, but we need to get that tape manufacturer to agree to, like, give us a little bit of a cut. How do we do that? I'll just put a big billboard in the movie. All right, thank you for watching the Film and Animation Podcast with Brian and Hellbent. It's been good having you all here. Thank you for watching. So let me tell you what happens to people who don't click like. Trash goes in the trash can. You go in the trash can where the trash goes.